<laughs> morning. <laughs> You're speedy today. <laughs> morning, Lynn. Morning, San. Oh, gosh. Lovely to see everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs> morning, Jasmine. Morning, Heather. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, I love seeing all your names pop up. It's really lovely. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> Amira, I hope you have a very lovely Friday too. I'm, I'm really well, thank you. I had a nice sleep last night. I got a nice cup of tea. Morning, Elizabeth. <laughs> nice to see you. Gosh, it's very lovely. I like seeing everyone's names pop up. Carrie, morning. Hope you're all right. Hope, you're, hope your foot's all right. It's your foot, isn't it? I think it's your foot. <laughs> hope you're okay. How have your week, how has your week been, everyone? Have you been busy this week? Jasmine, I saw your message about you're going to be on the exercise bike today and I need to keep you accountable. So, right, it's 10 o'clock. You've got an hour. <laughs> see how much, see how many kilometres you can cycle over the next hour. Oh, you're, you're a better woman than me. I'm sitting here with a cup of tea for an hour having a chat. <laughs> but good luck. Good luck. Let us know. Ah, yes, Carrie, I thought it was your foot. So um, I hope you're all right. Oh, my goodness. Jasmine says she's done 35 kilometres so far. Aiming for 50, but I'm hurting. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> you are amazing. Good on you. <laughs> Morning, Julie from California. It's very lovely to see you. Very early for you. Five o'clock in the... No, not five o'clock. It's, it must be two o'clock in the morning for you, mustn't it, if you're in California? <gasps> wow, that is dedication. Thank you for being here. That is so nice. <laughs> and um, Julie's just, um, Julie's an author. And you were saying in the week that you're finishing off your, your latest book for teens. So that will be interesting. Good luck with that. <laughs> Jasmine says, I can't feel my legs. <laughs> set myself the goal of 50k and she's doing it yes go for it oh not sue hello not sue from dorset nice to see you very good oh dear san you're not very well gosh well i'm glad that you're here i hope that you can have a nice relaxing hour but i'm sorry to hear that you're poorly how's your brother as well how's he doing has he has he got somewhere to stay how's he how's he doing I hope he's all right um, so let me, let me introduce myself to everyone. Um, I'm Sarah and I'm a therapist. I work in the UK, um, but I mostly work online. So I work with people who have anxiety from all over the world, really. And it's just a job that I absolutely love. <laughs> I'm just trying to talk and look at the, the messages here as I talk. Um, but I do these lives every Friday. I do alter the times a bit because we all have lives, don't we? You know, things to do. And sometimes I can do it at 10. Sometimes I do it in the afternoon. Sometimes I do it maybe six o'clock. And it, it's also I try and move it around because there are people from all over the world, like Julie Reese Diva. She's from California. There's other people from the Netherlands, from Europe, from Australia, from the UK. So I try and make it at a convenient time. So if you can't make one, then at least you can you can make one of them at some point. And don't forget, if you ever can't make the live or if you're just dipping in and dipping out, I always upload them to my YouTube channel so you can watch them with a nice cup of tea and a slice of cake if you feel like it. <laughs> so um, and, and a massively important part of these lives are my moderators so Lynn 250 Jasmine and Vicky Hodson thank you so much for being here because my moderators are beavering away in the background um, keeping everything safe because we all know don't we what what kindness looks like and sometimes we get people very rarely actually if I'm honest who um, are perhaps as not as kind as we'd like them to be um, and so 
if that's the case, they don't last <laughs> long on here, we'll just mute them. And if they're really persistent and not very nice, we'll block them. So we just want this to be a nice community. And I know that we have, you know, a lot of you come every week and it's so lovely to see your your faces. And, and probably there's some of you that, that don't say hello. Maybe you're just a bit um, nervous to say hello, but that's okay. You can just watch and be part of our community. And maybe if you feel that you're able, you can you can say hello or say goodbye at the end or ask a question because that's what I'm here for. The reason that I do these is um, to um, is to try and help as many people as I can. It's all free. Don't subscribe. You don't have to describe uh, subscribe to this at all because that's going to cost you money. Um, it's all free and through my profile if you have a look there's my profile pic on the top left hand side if you go through there and there's a link link tree on my profile there's loads of free resources in there so everything is free um, and I'll do my best to help um, for an hour answering any questions so let's have a look some of these comments I saw um Oh, that's very nice. Theo Adams, your voice is very calming. Thank you for bringing relief into my anxiety. Oh, that's such a lovely thing to say. Thank you very, very much. San, oh, your brother's still homeless. Not good, but we both keep our smiles. Oh, Jerry's lucky to have you as a sister. Um, and I know it's hard for both of you at the moment, but keep going. Keep going. Bronnie, hello. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome here. Charlie, hello. Um, let's have a look. Lynetta Santos. Lynette, sorry, I said your name wrong. Lynette Santos. Morning, morning to you. <laughs> let's have a look. Okay. Just scrolling through the comments and just seeing um, what I can answer for you. Um, so, um, Joe, Joe Adicott. Um, so that's a good question. That's quite a nice one. How did I get um, into this work? So I'll make a note of this um, and I'll answer that. <laughs> the oh, th Theo, you're from Australia. That's so cool. Where are you in Australia? Where is everyone? It's really nice. And um, Nigel, you're from Nigeria. Welcome. Um, Oh gosh, Lizzie, Lizzie too. Um, morning, Sarah. I got up and saw the sunrise. Love from Cumbria. Oh, my cousin lives in Cumbria. Um, so it's a, such a beautiful part of the world. I love going up there to visit her. I've not been up for a while. I need to get up and see her. <laughs> Let's see. Um, is there any fast track to being a therapist? Oh, that's quite a good one. Um, let's have a look. Oh, the, now apologies. If I don't see your question or your comment, um, then my apologies because these comments, they, they're there and I'm trying to scroll through them gradually and then all of a sudden they'll go blah, 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 and they'll all fly by. So my apologies if I don't um, see. <laughs> so yes, and as Jasmine says, Nigel, we can see your comments. There, there are a lot. So it's I'm just trying to gradually work my way through and I make little notes um, so and Theo so Theo Adams you're talking about metaphobia so what I'm, what I tend to do is I write down three comments three three questions and then I'll go through and answer them all so Theo hold hold on I'm gonna get to you ah Sakublevich it's so nice to see you <laughs> I hope you're all right Oh gosh, you're in Melbourne, aren't you? So what time is it? So about nine o'clock at night with you over there. Hope you're all right. Um, oh gosh, Savannah saw my ex last um, yesterday for the first time in a long while. It was so tough on my heart. Oh, it's really hard, isn't it? When you, you know, if you have a breakup, but well done you for, you got through it, you're all right. And hopefully, you know, if you see them the next time, it won't be so so painful. So, um, oh, who was it? Amira, the fast track to being a therapist. Okay, so let me answer these questions. So Joe, <laughs> Joe says, how did I get into this work? 
So I've always been interested in this kind of stuff. I don't know about you. I would imagine a lot of you are the type of people that people chat to, bring their problems to, and maybe you're really interested in how the mind works. Um, that's that's what I've always been like. I've always been really interested in it. And I remember when I was a teenager, I thought, oh, I really like to be a psychiatrist. Sadly, I wasn't quite scientifically minded enough to train to be a doctor. I was useless at sciences, you know. I think I got a biology O level, but I was much more arts, you know. I did I did languages, English literature is what my degree is in. So um, it, that was not to be. And I sort of thought that door's shut. So I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, and I'm realising as I'm talking that Amira, Amira, this probably is an answer to your question as well. So hopefully it's helpful for you. Um, so anyway, I just kind of lived my life, you know, I went to uni and um, I lived my life. I dropped out of uni. Um, I just was really miserable when I was there. Um, and I got into working in casinos. Um, so I worked in casinos, just kind of fell into that. I worked there for about 13 years and I started off started off as a roulette dealer and then worked my way through like Blackjack, Punta Banco, became an inspector, senior inspector. Um, and kind of in that time got married, travelled, came back to casinos and then um, had my, my first um, child and... I didn't go back. I didn't go back because I wanted to be able to stay at home and look after, look after my son. So I did that. But I was always like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm interested. I want to do more. I want to do more. What can I do? When my boys were old, were sort of school age, I worked in school because that was a good way of just, you know, having school holidays, really, you know. As a mum, if you're a mum or a dad, you'll recognise that, that it's hard when you've got children. You want to be able to be with them as much as you can, but it's hard having a job at the same time. So I did that. And then, I know this is like a long story, forgive me, <laughs> but um, I, I, I went to a therapist myself. I went to a hypnotist, a hypnotherapist, because I had a fear of something. And it was amazing. They helped me massively. And I was like, oh my goodness, how do, that's just like magic how can I do this so I looked into how to become a hypnotherapist and, and I discovered with all my research cognitive hypnotherapy and in particular quest cognitive hypnotherapy which is what I do now and Amira this is a way that um, you know if you're going to try obviously if you want to be a psychiatrist you need to become a doctor first you know, that takes at least seven years, doesn't it? Then you have to specialise. So to be a psychiatrist, you're looking at like 10, 15 years of study. And I was never going to do that. Um, I didn't want to do another degree. I'd done my degree in English literature, so I wasn't going to do a degree in psychology. And then I was looking at counselling and that was really expensive. It was like £10,000 or something to end up being a counsellor it was a lot of time. It was like years and years and years and years. Um, and then I looked at hypnotherapy and it's not regulated in the UK. And I thought, well, I don't want to do just some quick course where, um, you know, I, I don't get a good qualification. I want to do the best one I can find. And and I kept bringing, being brought back to Quest. And the course there is 10 months. So it's 10 months of study. And then you can go on to do the master practitioner, which is what I did. But it was amazing because it, you ended. I ended up with a, a really credible qualification, a good solid grounding, good support network, a professional qualifications um, in in a year. Um, and then you know, obviously, you keep learning, keep doing, keep doing work, keep doing training. So, so that hopefully that answers your your question, Joe, and also yours, Amira because it's a way of being a therapist. Obviously, I can't work with the range of people who perhaps a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a counsellor would work with. And I know that. And I always, you know, I make sure I'm, I'm very strict about who I work with um, because I don't want to do any harm. That's my first, the, the far, first part of our ethical guidelines is do no harm. So it's really important that I only work with the people who are within my remit of training so that means that I can work with people who have anxiety who have depression um, colleagues of mine work with people who have addictions um, 
limiting beliefs, fears, all of that kind of stuff. And that covers a huge array of people. So it means that we can help a lot of people. Um, and that's really wonderful. And I, I love it. So hopefully that's that's helpful. Thank you for asking the question. I appreciate that. Thank you for those of you who are um, joining it, joining us. It's really nice to, to have you here. Um, oh, gosh. Oh. Let's have a look. That's a silly comment. <laughs> I'm not answering that one. Um, let's have a look. I'm going to just scroll through. So I've got Theo. I'm going to talk to you, talk about emetophobia, which for those of you who don't know, is a fear of fear of sick, fear of being sick or, you know, it being around you. So, um, and this, this is a good one. So Ruth, Ruth has asked a question here. Um, left my job to focus on my disabled toddler. Although I'm happier, I'm more anxious. Any ideas for relief? Um, okay. Um, so, I mean, that's that's an amazing thing to do, isn't it? But I imagine it could potentially be quite lonely. So um, I will come back to you, Ruth, if that's all right. And I'll, um, I'll comment. If you can't be here, if you know, if your toddler is, is there and you're thinking, oh, I've got to go and do this or that for them, then have a look at the video when it's uploaded on youtube because you'll be able to see um that so we're about 15 minutes in so it'll be around this time i'll uh, maybe in uh, 20 minutes in i'll answer your question hope that's all right thank you so much for anyone if you like this if you share this if you're thinking oh someone might be interested in this then do please share do please like because the more people like and the more people share and the more people follow, the more TikTok al algorithm sends it out to other people. So I'm always really grateful. Don't feel that you have to do any of those things if you don't want to. Don't You don't need to send me anything. It's all free. You don't need to subscribe. Um, but it's just really lovely to have you here. And the more likes, as I say, and the more shares that, that, we, that you, you're able to do, <laughs> if you can be bothered, um, the more it gets to other people. So... Um, so Daisy B is saying here, some people don't work towards ethical guidelines and it's frustrating. So I'm, I'm taking it from that. Maybe Daisy, you're, you're a therapist of some kind. Um, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I was working with someone a while ago and I always say, I, if you're going to work with me, it's just me as your therapist. If you're already working, I, it's one of the questions I ask, are you already working with someone else? Because if if a person is already working with another therapist, I am not going to go in there and poach their client at all. And this person that I was working with, um, I was working with them. I'd worked with them for quite a long time. We'd had really good progress. Everything was going really nicely. And then they came and said, oh, I've started to work with this other therapist, a CBT therapist, because they said that they can help me with this thing. And I said, OK, well, it's all connected because that's the thing. You can't just pinpoint. I'm going to work on this and I'm going to work. It's all connected. It's all about protective behavior. And this person was saying um, the, the CBT therapist had said, oh, yes, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I thought, God, that's so unprofessional. It's just not right. So I said to my client, it's absolutely fine. If you want to work with this other person, if you feel that we've if we've come to the end of of the of us working together then that's that's absolutely fine but you know it has to be either you know either work with me or work with this new person but I thought it was so unprofessional of this person to just just sort of say oh yeah yeah we can I, I, because they for me that was just all about the money they just wanted the money for me it is it's about the the people you know it's about clients and 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 helping people and I think that's the thing about the Quest Institute, the sort of people who are drawn there to train. It's, it is about the care that we give. It's about, it's driven by a desire to help people. And that's what, I think that's what drew me to it in the first place. So if you're interested in training to be a therapist, it's well worth looking at. The link is on in my profile. I have to um, declare a conflict of interest somewhat because I am the training manager. So I am, I am biased. But, you know, I'm really honest. One, that's one of my values is being honest about things. So, <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm waffling a bit. Let's have a think. Um, OK, I'm going to. Oops, let's have a look. I'm going to block you. Oh, I don't do that very often. But <laughs> I have not been on a date with anyone called Sean. And so <laughs> that's nonsense, isn't it? Anyway. 
Let's see, let me answer another question. So let me answer your question, Theo, about emetophobia. Um, oh, and Caitlin, I've seen here that you just mentioned emetophobia too. So, so emetophobia is, uh, there are various, um, I have a category specifically about emetophobia, which is a fear of being sick, fear of vomit on my profile page. So if you have a look down at the bottom, there are categories, scroll along and you'll be able to see. So there's lots more detail about emetophobia. But the thing about emetophobia is it can be really, really debilitating because it can stop you going out. It can be make you feel quite fearful um, and it will have come from something. Um, it will have come from a, a particular event. Either you've been sick yourself, someone around you has been sick. Maybe you've just witnessed it even on on TV. But in that moment, it was... Um, Oh no! Oh my goodness, that's what I've done. Oh no! How do I? I'll, um, how do I unblock them? <gasps> oh, I feel so bad. Oh, Lynn. So Lynn's just told me that the person I've just blocked, and that's the first time I've ever blocked anyone, was telling me that they'd gone on a date. Oh God. Oh, Lynn, can you unblock her? Thank you. And can you send her a message and apologise and say I'm so sorry? That's terrible. Oh God. What a numpty I am. God, we all make mistakes, don't we? Just, I kept seeing it, like, oh, that we were on that first date together and it was great. And I was thinking, I haven't been on a date with you. I've been married for 30 years. So, oh, apologies. Um, thank you, Lynn. Yeah, unblock her. Okay, thank you. Um. So, okay, so emetophobia. So it will come from an, an event. So... What's important, I think emetophobia is one of those things that actually it's really important to, to see someone, to see a therapist about. And, what, you know, whatever type of therapist, is, it doesn't really matter. It's about you finding someone that you click with and you feel um, can help with this. Um, because what you can do is help the levels of anxiety that you feel around it, but also go back, like, you know, sort of think about where has this come from? How can I reframe this? So... It's quite interesting to be curious about that. What was going on? What was happening in the time leading up to you feeling this way? Um, and, um, and have a look at that. Be curious. Because sometimes things can happen when we're children. And I mean, like, for example, my son um, had emetophobia and it just came from, it seemed to come from nowhere, but actually he had just started secondary school. And I think that, um, he was already quite anxious because he'd gone from a really small little primary school. Um, and he then was ill because we were due to go on holiday and he he was sick and he was it was very unexpected he'd hardly ever been sick in his life before and it was scary for him you know as as a, a kid um as a young person it was scary and over time um with the work that we did to help the anxiety firstly we realized that it was actually not so much a fear of being sick or sickness it was a fear of being out of control and so that's quite an interesting thing with emetophobia is i don't know if you find this theo um that quite often it's the it's the uncontrollable aspect of people being sick it's like one minute you're fine the next minute it's all you're all out of control so um i think perhaps um it's interesting to look at that because the thing is that if, if something happens when you're quite young you're dealing with it that part of you that's dealing with it is young you know they don't have the understanding of you as an adult potentially so it's quite good to look back at it from an adult point of view with the help of a therapist to be able to um view it through through different eyes because if that happened to you now as an adult, probably would be a very different um, experience. Um, yeah, and often actually I've had clients in the past who have come to me with a metaphobia and one of the things is that they've never been sick, that they actually have been really healthy their whole lives and they're just really afraid that they are going to be sick because maybe they've seen someone be sick or they've 
you know, seen it on films or so on, and they think, oh, God, it's going to be awful. And actually, when they are sick, maybe they get a bug and they're sick, um, they realise, oh, it's not that bad after all. It was okay. I dealt with it. It didn't kill me. It wasn't terrible. And actually, I felt much better afterwards. Because that's the thing is, with with sickness, our it's our body sending us a message that, um, you know, we're we're ill or we've eaten something dodgy you know and you get rid of it and then you you feel so much better afterwards um I know it's probably a generalization but you know generally that's that's the feeling um okay I need to unblock Sean. I can't find it on the list oh god okay all right I'm gonna do uh, do you remember so Sh San did you see her name? I saw that you... Could you, one of you, send me her her username? Because I will find her and after the live and unblock her and message her and apologise for being awful. Um, let's see. If you wouldn't mind doing that, I'd really be grateful if you could... Oh, Sean, okay. At Sean... Oh, let me... I've got my glasses. Dot... M R I A under slash old. Brilliant. Let's see. I've got that, son. Thank you very much. I will do that. Ah, oh, that serves me right, doesn't it? Oh, she must be feeling awful. That's terrible. Okay. Um, so, Theo, I hope that helped a little bit. Um, Let's have a look. I could see, and um, there was Caitlin. You were talking about um, having um, having a metaphobia, and Rosie Rainbows. Hello, Rosie Rainbows. Um, you were saying perhaps your daughter's got this as well. So I think you'd be amazed the number of people that that have it. Oh, Karen, I have severe metaphobia. It, it it's a horrible thing when you've got it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me have a little sip of my tea. Um, mm. oh my god that's so lovely I started drinking lemon and ginger tea it's so nice I don't really like like herbal teas I felt, I've always felt like I should like them <laughs> like green tea and all that but I don't really like them they just taste like ugh. and I started drinking lemon and ginger tea oh it's so nice so anyway beside the point isn't it um, so yeah, so as I was saying, have a look. I've, I've done various videos on emetophobia, so perhaps go and have a little look. Um, let's have a look. So, so Laura, Laura, you're asking about agoraphobia. So yes, I do, I do have videos on agoraphobia on my profile page. Again, I think I've got them on the the categories at the bottom so you might want to have a little look at that but um with all of these things you know whether you have um health anxiety i've seen a few people commenting about health anxiety um the, the physical symptoms of anxiety agoraphobia all of these anxieties they all come as a protective behavior they are a reaction a response to our nervous system believing that there is threat to us. Um, and what's happening with anxiety, and, and those of you who've you know been here a while and come regularly, you probably, you know this already, but perhaps if you're new here, it's helpful for you, that we tend, medical prof professionals, health professionals can, can give the impression that anxiety is this thing that means you're broken, that you're mentally ill, that that's you forever. Um, and, and actually, anxiety happens for a reason. Anxiety is fight or flight. It's that... So our, our nervous system is constantly scanning our environment. All of our senses, our, our eyes, our, our, our sense of smell, our sense of touch, our sense of hearing, our, everything is scanning our environment all the time. And sometimes there really is danger. And in which case we get thrown into fight or flight, um, we are spurred into action 
and we either remove ourselves from the danger, you know, so if you're crossing the road and you go, oh my God, there's a car coming, you you immediately, you don't think about it, you remove yourself from the danger, don't you? Um, or maybe you get angry and you fight your way out of a situation. And sometimes we go into freeze or flop and that can be a place where perhaps we just think, well, I am I know there's danger there, I, I can't find a way out. So I'm just going to just curl up in a ball, withdraw until hopefully the danger goes away. So it can be obviously a hugely, hugely helpful response for us. But sometimes we find ourselves in a place where because of the experiences we've had in our life, we are in fight or flight a lot of our time and we're being triggered by day to day events. And that's because we've perhaps experienced something in our past. We've experienced it, we've survived it, but our nervous system has has filed that away with a little red flag next to it saying, yeah, watch out for this, because if this happens or anything like it, then we need to trigger fight or flight. But what if that thing is being told off? Or what if that thing is someone looming over you and telling you off? What if that thing is someone being sick or someone being ill around you or you being ill then all of a sudden that can be flagged regularly you can be flagging that every day and all of a sudden it starts to become your normal that you are anxious you and and it feels like it's at a level of identity that you are an anxious person but actually it is still a behavior it's not a conscious behavior you're not choosing to be anxious of course you're not but your nervous system is doing its best to help you. The thing is that your nervous system is working on information that is outdated, is potentially no longer true. And sometimes your nervous system is looking off into the future because if you, you probably recognise this, that you, you spend a lot of time in the future imagining the what ifs, overthinking, what if this happens? What if that happens? What am I going to do? Well, that can be helpful because we need to do that. We need to plan ahead to a certain extent. But actually, when that becomes um, overwhelming and begins to stop you being able to live your life, that's not a good way to be. So what do you do? You can do lots of things for yourself. And these are described on my page, on my main page. I have lots of videos talking about this and talking about how we can send our nervous system the physical messages that it's okay, we are in fact safe. And we can do that by um, physical coping techniques, maybe looking at our environment, thinking, well, I need to change the environment I'm in because this is telling me that I'm in danger all the time. So changing the environment, and I go into this in more detail in other videos, um, physical coping techniques, so breath techniques, visualization techniques, things like um, tapping, that sort of stuff can be really helpful. Self-care is huge because if you start to give yourself little oases of time in your day where you're doing stuff that you, you love, and it's different for all of us, but to do stuff that you really look forward to doing, you love doing whilst you're doing it, and you can look back on and go, oh, that was so lovely. In that moment, you're getting the release of the hormones like um, endorphins and oxytocin and serotonin and dopamine. And that is the stuff that tells our nervous system, we're safe, we're all right in this moment now. Look at me, I'm just sat in, in my room having a cup of tea. And for those of you at home watching this, where are you sitting right now? Where are you? You, you're, you're sat there, hopefully with a cup of tea or a coffee, and you're safe in this moment. And it's that realisation, that bringing yourself to this moment. Here I am. Here I am. I'm all right. And the more you can do that, the more the levels of stress hormones, the adrenaline and cortisol that are released in fight or flight, start to get lower and lower and lower and lower. So even if you have a fright, even if something triggers you, it you're getting triggered from down here and you go, ooh. Whereas probably at the moment where you are is you're up here and you're, ah, uh, oh, like this. Your muscles are tense, your breathing has changed. And if you do get triggered by something, it's 
straight into overwhelm, maybe into a panic attack, something like that. Obviously, another thing that you can do is go and see someone, talk to someone, find a therapist so that you can go back with the therapist and talk about where does this come from? What's, what's going on there? And you can reframe it. So I hope that explains it a little bit because stuff like, so Laura, you were asking about agoraphobia. Ruth, you were asking about relief for the anxiety that you feel looking after your toddler. Um, that, that's, that's the thing. It's about beginning to introduce the self-care into your day, to begin to introduce these moments where you just stop and go, okay, what's happening here for me? Where am I? Oh, I'm just here. I am in this moment safe. And even in the most stressful of times, you can have moments where perhaps you connect with someone that you trust, someone that makes you feel that you're seen, that you're heard. And in that moment, even though you might have turmoil, going on around you, you can have a moment where you laugh, a moment where you get that little feeling, that feeling of warmth of, and all of you. So if right now, think about a time when you've been with someone that you really trust, you really feel safe with, that makes you feel good, or maybe a memory from a time where you were just, you felt good. And if you close your eyes just for a moment and just take yourself to that person, to that place. You should get that little feeling of warmth, just that sense of, yeah. And that's what we're looking for. I know with my clients, when I'm talking to them and they start talking about those places, those people, their whole physiology changes. Because if you remember someone um, that you love, remember someone that is a safe person for you, a caring, nurturing person for you. If you remember a moment where you felt that peace, that calm, you relive it. You get a release of those hormones again. And that's an amazing thing. That's a gift we can give to ourselves. And that's what we want, more of that each day. Because the more that you do that, they're like pinpoints, pinpricks in the darkness of your day. And the more you do it, the bigger those pinpricks become. And they grow and they grow. So that eventually, with all the, the stuff that I'm talking about, you get to a place where your day feels so much lighter, so much brighter. <laughs> so I hope that that, that helps. A little bit. <laughs> um, so, and I am um, so, Ruth. I hope that helps a little bit for you. I know it's difficult when you have a little one, and especially if your toddler is is, is handicapped in some way, then you know it's it might be a challenge to find times to do that. But it's about working the problem. About thinking, okay, I want to do that. How can I do that? So just have a, maybe have a reflect on that. Um, and I hope that, I hope that helps a little bit. Have a look on my page for specifics of stuff that you can, you can find. Um, okay. So going back to Sean, I can see I've got her username now, so I'm going to find her and I'm going to unblock her after the live. I'm, I just have to really apologize that's awful i won't be blocking people anymore i'm going to leave that to my mo my moderators lynn 250 and jasmine and vicky hodson they're so good at this <laughs> i'm here doing all the talking but actually they're in the background um doing all of the keeping everyone safe they're so much better at it than i am so oh okay so laura okay I, agoraphobia so agoraphobia um is is actually a fear of the marketplace. People feel, think that agoraphobia is that means you can't go out, and it it does. It can sort of show that um, it can show in that way. But actually, with agoraphobia, it's really a fear of of of. It can start with one particular thing, but it just grows and grows and it grows. So it's like a fear of everything. So you're so in protection, um, and you you end up 
your world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, I've just seen a th hello from Thailand. Hello. Um, ch Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, oh, I'm so blind as a bat. Chat, chat, proper. Chat, proper. Oh, wait. Welcome from Thailand. It's nice to see you. Um, so with agoraphobia, um, all of these things can be really helpful. The self-care, the techniques and small steps. You know, have a look at what was happening in the lead up to you starting to feel this way, because that's the thing that gives you the clue. And look at that. And quite often, you know, if you think about what we've all been through, we've all been through COVID. We've all been through financial crisis. We've all been through the cost of living crisis right now. The, politically, the world is falling to pieces. E ecologically, the world is falling to pieces. And, you know, that that leaves its mark on all of us. So begin to be kind to yourself. That's That's the first thing. Um, oh, Vicky Handlebars, it's so nice to see you. Vicky Handlebars is also one of my, um, my my moderators. It's very lovely to see you. I hope you're all right. Um, so, and see Laura here, you're saying lockdown is what started it. So that's, that, that's very interesting because in lockdown, you know, I, it, it's, it was that place where we didn't know what was going to be happening. I mean, I remember, you know, I, I was washing everything. We'd come in. The person who'd done the shopping would come in, drop the shopping bags, go and shower. Um, and then the someone else would get their like gloves on, get all the, sh the shopping and we would wash everything and then put it away. Well, obviously now in hindsight, you know, oh God, you didn't need to be doing that. But at the time it was really scary. And we thought that that's what we had to do to stay alive. And so when you look back at it, you know, we were in an absolutely... I know they overuse this word a lot, but unprecedented um, way of um, of being that none of us had experienced before. So to so look back at that and start to think, um, you know, actually, it's no wonder that my brain thought I'm in terrible, terrible trouble here. And it's very, very um, frightening. Um, but it's it's that sense of thank you, Louise J. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Um, it's that sense of understanding that and beginning to reframe it and beginning to give yourself an environment of safety so that you can be in a world where your nervous system can catch up a bit and realize it's okay we're all right you might want to have a look at tapping can be quite helpful i've done a whole series of of videos on tapping tapping is a way of being in the moment processing how you feel um and calming yourself. Research has shown that it reduces levels of cortisol by 25% um, and anxiety generally by about 40%. So it's well worth having a look at. Um, but I think with agoraphobia, it can be really helpful to talk to a therapist. So perhaps to, to either look up, you know, if you look up agoraphobia, there'll be support gro groups near where you are. Um, so because meeting online can be really helpful but the thing with support groups as well is make sure it's a positive one make sure it's not one of those support groups where you all just go down a plug hole of oh god everything is so awful and everything is so terrible you know it's really important that you're in a place of positivity and looking for okay what can i do what what action can i take to help myself um, what works and looking at yes i feel like this now but i'm not going to feel like this forever so I hope that helps a little bit. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, Jasmine, I want to ask you, how many kilometres have you done? So Jasmine is on the exercise bike whilst, do <laughs> whilst doing um, the moderating for this live. And she'd done th 20, 30 kilometres when you first got here. How many how many kilometers are you at? The, I think the the target was fifty k, so <laughs> so let me know where are you at now. <laughs> oh hello Sarah double O two nice to see you. Welcome to everyone who is 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 joining. It's really nice to have you here. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh Emily Thomas hello nice to see you. Um, Okay, 
thank you everyone for joining. It's very nice to have you here. I'm Sarah and I'm a, a, a Quest Cognitive Hypnotherapist um, and I'm here every Friday, different time. So, you know, if, if you haven't followed me, then I, it would be lovely if you follow me because then you can see, I always do a post saying when my next live is. And also if you go on my profile page, you can always see there's a little, little event thing that you can register and, and come along. You'll see when the next live is. I'm not sure, but it'll be next Friday at some point, but I'm not too sure because I'm doing quite a bit of work next Friday with various things. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you for uh, saying nice things. Um, I know you're going through a hard time at the moment, and but you're so supportive, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Um, oh, there's a few things here about um, about panic attacks here. So let me answer those. Um, just writing them down. If you can't stay for this whole live, then it's it's absolutely fine, obviously. <laughs> but you know, do feel um, do have a look at my YouTube because I, I will over the weekend upload this to my YouTube channel, which is Sarah Aris Therapy, um, and the link to it is on my profile page. There's a link that goes through to lots and lots of free resources. So if you're interested in anything to do with anxiety fears, mental well-being, do go and have a little look. So there's loads and loads of info on there and it's all free. Everything is free on here. So, um, it, you know, you, you don't have to, if you can't stay, then don't worry because you can catch up. Um, so I'm going to talk about panic attacks. Um, so Vicky, Vicky K, I keep waking at around 3am having severe panic attacks. I'm starting to dread bedtime, so hopefully this will be helpful for you. Um, let's see. I'm just seeing if Jazz. Oh, Jasmine! Jasmine just hit fifty k. <laughs> Took. Oh my goodness! Three hours. Blimey, O'Reilly, that is very good. Don't wear yourself out though, will you? I hope you're going to go and go and uh, have a nice, relaxing rest of your day. But I mean, excellent job. <laughs> Well done, Jasmine. That is so good. That is so good. I'm very impressed with that. Excellent. <laughs> Gosh. So, so there's a few things here: panic attacks, fear of driving. Um, let's have a let's have a little um, look. And hello, Caitlin. Thank you for saying hello. Um, Beth, I do talk about social anxiety on these lives. I haven't talked about it today, but if you have a look on my YouTube, there's various. Um, ones where I have talked about um, social anxiety and also in my profile there's on the grid there's lots of ones about social anxiety um, let's have a look um, okay so let me talk about this so panic attacks um, and also um, so any anxiety that you're you're feeling is your your body your nervous system trying to send you a message it's sending you a message um, about something that it believes is a th of threat to you um, and it could actually be a threat <laughs> it could be something genuine um, or it could just be something that feels like it's a threat so having driving lessons um, having a driving test, having an exam, all of that kind of stuff absolutely can feel like a threat. It can feel scary. Um, but it's not so much that those things are life threatening because they're not. What is going on there is potentially a fear of failure, a fear of being judged, a fear of being out of control. So have a little think about that. What's going on for you? So if you've left a message here saying, you know, I'm 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 scared of a particular thing, what is actually going on there for you? Um, because that's an interesting thing. It's interesting to be curious about this kind of stuff. Um, so the body's sending messages, and most of the time those messages work because we feel so grim. We feel, you know, we might have chest pains, we might have um, headaches, we might feel sick, we might feel faint, we might just have that overwhelming sense of, oh, you know, that 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 feeling of anxiety, um, and 
when you, when you remove yourself from it, if you just say, oh, I'm, not, I'm just not going to do that thing, quite quickly, that feeling goes away. Obviously, any physical symptoms that you feel, go and get them checked out with your doctor because, or, or phone NHS 111 or look on their website because it's always worth getting physical symptoms checked out. But <coughs> if you remove yourself from a situation and that physical symptom goes away, the chances are that it is connected to anxiety. So one moment. <laughs> oh. So... Um, so if it goes away, um, and if it goes away or if it reduces by using some of the techniques that I share on my page, so physical techniques, breath techniques, if it goes away or becomes less when you start using self-care in your day, then the chances are that that's down to anxiety. So you can, you can either go further and get it checked out by a therapist and, and reframe it, get rid of that fear, because you can totally reframe it the number of clients that come to me and we do techniques and they reframe it and they go no was that it and we go back into the memory and I say so where's that anxiety where's that feeling is it still there and they go no it's gone and that is wonderful from a point of view of a therapist I love that I love that moment when they realize I don't have to live with this anymore. So it's worth seeing a, seeing a therapist for just, you know, to get to get that moment. Um, with panic attacks, panic attacks tend to come when A, you're not listening to the, the messages that your nervous system is sending you, or B, um, you're in such a sort of chronic state of anxiety that your levels are up here. So if you imagine your body as a bathtub um, and over time you've had um, release of adrenaline and, cort and cortisol, another, 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 another. And so your bathtub is, is right at its limit. It's, it's filled with these stress hormones and all it takes is one thing. And it can feel like something quite small, but that one thing, like you didn't sleep last night, or you, um, someone said something to you, or um, something, whatever it is for you personally, that is the straw that breaks the camel's back. And it can be like, oh, <laughs> into overwhelm, into panic attack, because it's that sense of, listen to me, do something about this. Does that make sense? Now, if you're having um, if you're having panic attacks and they're waking you up in the middle of the night, you might think to yourself, "But hang on a minute, oh, betwixt, hello, oh my god, this is so lovely to see you." So, if if you um, so if you have a look in the comments, betwixt is um, is a friend and a colleague of mine, Hazel Gale, who is one of the co-creators of Betwixt, which is an app which is amazing. Um, Hazel is a fellow um, Quest Cognitive Hypnotherapist. She's an amazing therapist, an amazing speaker. She has written books um, um, about, God, I might even have it here. Yeah, fight, Hazel Gale. Oh my God, look at this. I, I am gonna keep talking about panic attacks, but look at, look. <laughs> Are you impressed, Hazel, that I've got this here? So go and follow Betwixt because it's an amazing app. It's to do with mental health. It's like a journey through this mystical, magical land, but it's really brilliant. So please if you go and go and follow her. Go and go and give her give it a look because it's it's really, really amazing. But it's so nice to see you here, Hazel. <laughs> so anyway, panic attacks, as I was saying. Um, so if you get that if, you're, if your levels of stress hormones are up here and maybe you're asleep and so you've got stuff going on in your day and your brain's trying to sort it all out and it again reaches that moment of overwhelm of I can't do this anymore, I, I just can't, you go into a panic attack. So in the moment with a panic attack, there's a few things that you can do. Firstly, it's that understanding that a panic attack is never going to kill you. It can feel horrible, um, but to know that it will pass, you will reach a level 
and then you will start to come down the other side. It's also really helpful to let people around you know what to do. So if you have a partner that maybe is in bed with you at night and and you're waking up regularly with, with panic attacks or during your day, whether at work or at home, you might be having panic attacks or maybe your child has panic attacks, then to know um, that... Um, for them to know that well for to to let the people around you know what you need because actually just having someone there with you to be with you to hold your hand if you want that to just put their hand on your shoulder to reassure you to they don't need to say anything you know if if someone's having a panic attack probably I'm not cognitively able to really take much notice of what you're saying so but it's the physicality of I'm here I'm here, it's okay, it's okay. Let's just breathe together. That's slowing down. I, I did a course once and they talked about the one the one armed seagull technique, which just made me laugh, but actually it's quite helpful. So if someone's having a panic attack, if if you know if you're having a panic attack panic attack, for someone to help you with this, that sense of okay, so just going up. And down, up and down. And the person who's doing that, your helper, they're sinking their breath with that. Or maybe just they're with you and they're, they're looking at you, they're, they're, they're saying, it's okay, be with me, be with me, I'm, I'm here for you. And just their calmness, it's like throwing someone a, a, a life belt. So your nervous system is going... God, help me. And their nervous system is going, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here. And so your nervous system goes, yes, 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 yeah. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And you start to co-regulate. So that can be really helpful. So pre preparation before, if you know that you're prone to panic attacks, that can be helpful in the moment, letting people know what you need. Um, but also laying the groundwork, looking at what is going on in my life at the moment, that I have these high levels of anxiety and beginning to create that environment of safety for you and your nervous system to understand, okay, I'm doing these things that are gradually lowering the level lowering the levels of these stress hormones within my system and not seeing the panic attack um, or your nervous system as like the bad part of you like oh my god oh why is it doing it's that gratitude and this might sound really weird but a gratitude of <sighs> my nervous system is doing its absolute utmost to help me sometimes it does it in a way that makes me feel really really rubbish but actually it's trying to help me so that thank you Thank you, it's okay, it's okay, we're gonna be all right. So, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, you can get through this, you absolutely will, but it's more about the, the, the all around thing rather than trying to think, oh, it's the isolated things and I'm gonna deal with them then. If you deal with the surrounding stuff, if you create a life where you're doing things that you you love, oh, thank you, in betwixt in the rose, that was very kind of you, thank you, Hazel. Um, if you're doing stuff to give yourself a good life, then the anxiety will fall away, because anxiety, panic attacks are there um, for for a reason. They're just trying to help you. So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, okay, so we are 10.58, that flew, <laughs> that that really flew, so, um, so it's been an hour, oh thank you Mangy Bear, that's really kind of you, um, and we're kind of at the end of our, of our time together, so it has been so lovely to, to have you here. Thank you to all of you for being here. Thank you for everyone who's commented, everyone who's asked a question. My apologies if I haven't answered your question. I'm so sorry. But do have a look at my YouTube, which is, as I say, through my profile, Sarah Aeris Therapy. Um, and you can 
you can have a look on there. Um, there are lots of lots of categories of things which are in the descriptions of the YouTube videos on the, the, the tags as well to helpfully hope you and on my profile page loads loads of categories so do have a, a look thank you so much for if you followed me if you've shared if you sent me a little gift or, or likes thank you so much because all of those things help spread this helps the algorithm send it to other people who might need this who might be interested um, in these these topics so um, I, I so appreciate all of those things. Um, I'm going to do another one next Friday. So I haven't decided on the time yet because I've got a few meetings on, on Friday. So I probably might do one around lunchtime, if I'm honest, unless I decide I might, I might go out for lunch. <laughs> Maybe I'll do one before lunch and then go out for a late lunch. <laughs> treat myself go and have a sandwich somewhere sounds luxurious doesn't it i'm not going to the ritz <laughs> but anyway so um yeah so but keep an eye out if you've followed me then it will be on my profile page there'll always be an event which you can register for so do keep an eye on that you can just find my profile page by tapping on my picture um but um yes thank you jasmine i do deserve a treat i think we all do don't we we all deserve treats we all deserve i i say to my clients about um joy bombs creating joy bombs in our life so i can see like in my diary or my calendar i can see like it's almost like a little one of those little old-fashioned black bombs that i know it's on the horizon and it's full of glitter and happiness and and friends and connection and i know that i've got something to look forward to um it's like for example my brother-in-law is coming this afternoon for a cup of coffee i'm so looking forward to seeing him and that is like boom little joy bomb that I'm waiting for so if, if you can do that in your lives um that can make a big difference <laughs> ah bonjour from uh bonjour from France that is um very lovely to see you there <laughs> oh Maggie Cherry I'm glad you met I make you laugh that's good <laughs> anyway so thank you all thank you thank you so much to my moderators um Lynn 250 Jasmine Vicky um, Hodson, Vicky Handlebars for being here. So nice to see you. But you keep this place a safe, a safe place. You you keep us all connected, and you answer the questions that I can't answer or I I I don't see or you know. So I so appreciate you giving up your time. Um, none of my moderators are therapists, but they're just damn nice people, um, and so I, I'm forever grateful that i've met all of you <laughs> thank you very much um so yeah i'm gonna um i'm gonna say goodbye i'm not gonna go straight away because i'm just gonna scroll through so if you want to say goodbye then I'm, I'm i'm gonna scroll through and say goodbye to everyone put my tea over here so i don't knock it all over myself that would be terrible um but thank you for being here and i'll see you next friday okay or in the week because i'll be i'll be posting in the week obviously but yeah, you take care of yourselves. Let me have a look. I'm going to say some goodbyes. Oh, Elizabeth Malmros, it's, I'm so glad that you've been here. I hope you have a nice weekend. You take care of yourself. I hope your husband's all right and has a good weekend too. Um, ah, Rosie Rainbows, your joy bombs are going to be pink, not black. I like that. Maybe mine should be purple. I hadn't thought of that. That's a really good idea. <laughs> oh, let's have a look. Um, oh, I scroll past a load of stuff and I don't want to miss anyone. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Jasmine, well done with your with your cycling. That is so good. True Blue, thank you for being here. It's really nice to see you. <laughs> oh, LM, thank you. Thank you for being here. I'm glad that you've enjoyed it. And Lizzie too. Cheerio, nice to see you here. Thank you. Heather, it's always lovely to see you here. I, I love, you know, these names of people that I see, I see in the week commenting on my videos and I see you every week and it's so lovely to see you here. Um, so thank you, Heather. You take care. Have a lovely weekend. Bucky, take care. Thank you too. <laughs> oh, bye, Alex B. I've got a work presentation to do today. Good luck. I hope it goes really well. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Oh, Julie from Julie Reese Diva from 
from California. Have a lovely weekend, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, user. Oh, 3211. A breath of sunshine. That's the nicest thing. What a lovely thing to say. Do you know, it really touches my heart. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye, Maggie Cherry. Big hugs to you too. <laughs> oh, oh Hafsa's, Hafsa's zone. That's the same. My eyes aren't very good, so I can't see. But I think that's right. So happy to have found you. You have a very healing voice. Thank you. I'm glad you found us too. That's really nice. Oh, have a nice weekend. I can't see your name, but you've got like little cherries. So I hope you have a nice weekend. Rosy rainbows. Big purple hearts to you too. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, Kim just came across your page on the way to work and what you said has helped a lot. Good. I'm so glad. Good. Well, welcome. And it's really nice to have you here. Oh, Bucky, you've emailed me. OK, I'll go and have a look after the live. Um, I So if you if you email or ask for any resources, it's what I kind of do it by. It's me doing it. I haven't got a, a magical app. I need to sort it out. Um, but I'm just anyway. But so if you don't get it an answer straight away, um, I always do answer. But sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. So so I will. I will answer. <laughs> Carrie, I hope you have a lovely weekend and I hope you feel all right this weekend. You take care. Um, Bronnie, cheerio, a lovely weekend to you too. <laughs> oh gosh, let's see. Um, oh, Jen, Jan, glad I stumbled upon this live. Off to check out your YouTube. Brilliant. That's, I hope you like it. Um, Mrs. B, oh, nice to see you. Have a lovely day. You feel really relaxed. Oh, well, that's good news. I'm glad. I'm glad. I always feel really relaxed after these two. So I really enjoy them. Yeah. Okie dokie. Lovely. Catherine, good morning. And I have to say goodbye because I'm off. But um, take care. Have a lovely weekend. Frankie, Frankie Hopkin, have a lovely weekend. You and... Right, I really am now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head off. Uh, San, you take care of yourself, and um, I will see you soon. Take care, everyone, and thank you for everything. <laughs>